instead of the doll and the chair or alto saxophone.
Okay, I played, I played Wings for you last time. Oh, okay, okay, Wings. Okay. For some reason, this, that's okay. I that, but, but it's very, very excellent playing. Um, just a few things that I'm sorry that I've cut off near the end there because of the time. Uh, I wanted to be able to you know, spend a little bit of time talking about this. Um, so, what, Joe, and I know it's a very difficult question. What are some of the things that you feel like you struggle with or that you just don't feel comfortable when you play this piece or in general? I feel like the pacing okay. is definitely an yeah. issue. You know, like most concertos, there's these breaks, right? Especially in the first one in this, like, you know, where I play, the orchestra plays, and I play. But still, the piece is so athletic in nature that pacing yourself through all these jumps and autismo and strange things can be a struggle. So, right. so pacing probably is the first thing. So pacing, um, okay. But that also, are you talking about the artisanal? Are you also referring to some of the controls? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, so just to make sure I have enough energy, enough presence of mind to keep, right. keep calm, keep focused. Right. Right. And be able to execute all this things that it's like. Right. Yeah. And I think um, normally I don't you know, spend time in the master class setting to talk about a lot of the physical aspect of it. Uh, because it's just so difficult. Uh, you usually have a, a private lesson setting where you can actually you know, discuss and try different things. Uh, but I do want to mention, uh, I always, with any chance I get, I try to try to talk about this because it's just so important. And it has to, we talk about pacing and control. Um, I really think that it would help you if you have a different feeling inside okay. the world cabinet. Um, I'm not just talking about the different fingerings, the front fingerings or the yeah. palm key fingerings that, that we use, but there, there are basically four areas when you play the saxophone deck, or any main instrument, but particularly the saxophones, that you really have to deal with and be very careful in your, in your, in your uh, practicing. The first area is, and these are not in any particular order by the way, the first area is the back of the throat. Okay, back of your throat, if you want to think about the opening of it, that's fine. Or usually the back of the throat also related to the back of your tongue, whether your tongue, back of your tongue is high or low. That's one area. The second area is how you're manipulating your tongue muscles. Okay, now for non saxophone is here before the body talking about. Yeah, we have to deal with this every day. Um, so tongue, we deal with our tongue all the time. So tongue and the back of the throat, and then the third area, obviously, is the embouchure. We talk about embouchure, okay? Many people have many ideas, but uh, um, maybe at that for now. So embouchure, back of the throat, tongue. And then the th fourth area is missed by a lot of people, and that is the upper palate, okay? So what I mean by that is most people don't realize they are actually using the upper palate every single day. Did you know that? You may not feel it, but you're actually engaging your upper palates. Do you know why? Every day. Well, whenever you talk to your girlfriend, you're engaging your upper palates. Whenever you talk to your mother, you're engaging your upper palates. Do you know why? Because just the fact that you can speak clearly, you have to engage the different area, area of your upper palates. So if I do not engage my upper palates, this will happen. Well, I don't know why, 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 So the, the, you will have no idea what I'm talking about because I'm not articulating, okay? And this idea that I, I got really not, I, it's not right from my idea, it's from really uh, a, a phonetician. People that study Bao, study uh, uh, phonics, uh, and, and help people to uh, get better at their speech. Like maybe a, a kind of a people who have hearing problems, they have trouble learning how to articulate with their mouth. And in fact, the different point of on the upper roof is called the point of articulations or point of attack. Okay. So a lot of our artisanals, uh, I don't have a lot of time, but again, a lot of our artisanals or high enough controls has direct relations with how you engage the upper okay. So for, in your case, again, we don't have a lot of time to, to do a lot of things, but 
I just want to try a few things with you and see if that helps. Now, let's go to um, the famous second movement on that. Um, so what I want you to do, okay, you might feel be very uncomfortable, okay, okay, but let's do your best. So what I want you to do is, I want you to stick out your chin as you play, okay, okay. I'm not going to say this, oh, well, not like this, but just forward. Right now, what happened is you're doing this. So I want you to just, you know, it's very awkward, okay, but I want you to try it into it. So let's do it. just by yourself. Uh, like an eye? Yeah, right at eye, and then you can tell me how you feel. Okay, yeah, yeah, go ahead and stick up, yes. So, out of, so we, with that, 
the question of whether you're using the front key or the palm keys is really insignificant because I always ask the student to be able to play the front and the, the side is the same. So let's let's give an example. So we're, uh, we're go, go with the but let's just do the first uh, thing. First, I want to use the front and then use the side.